What's up guys, it's Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down how wide receivers can get out of their breaks in three steps, okay? So now the main thing I want you to understand about this is that when you guys are running any kind of breaks like a curl route, a comeback route, or mainly a dig route, those are the three breaks that I think that we're going to focus on today, um, you don't want to be too caught up in steps. Like today we're going to be talking about how to eliminate wasted steps, but you don't want to be that guy that is so concerned with getting out in three steps and two steps, and, and some guys even think that they can get out of breaks like this in one step, that you slow down and you don't sell vertical, okay? Because the number one thing is to eliminate wasted time, not to eliminate um, steps that are or could be necessary. So let's watch Think Full Speed. So this is Kyle Phillips out of UCLA at his pro day, and this is a great example of keeping speed all the way into the break and not worrying about the steps. So you see when he snaps down on this route, that's the step that's the most key right there. Obviously, they call that the trigger step. So anytime you guys are trying to get out of a comeback, get out of a curl, a dig, sometimes you could speed cut a dig, but let's say you're snapping down, that is the most important step because that gets you to that low explosive spot while being able to sell vertical. If you guys do not snap down, you have no chance to get out of the break in the least amount of time possible because you're either going to eat. There's two ways you could slow down. You could either drop your hips or you could slow down right before the break. Now, we don't want to slow down before the break because that's an indicator to a DB of what I'm going to do. So let me rewind this real quick. So a lot of receivers, what they'll do is they're so worried about steps that when they get to this point, they start to shorten their stride. They start to raise their pad level and just overall slow down because as everybody knows, it's a lot easier to make breaks when you're not running full speed. But the problem with that is that if you got a DB turning and running with you, or you got a DB who's in a back pedal and he starts to feel your speed change, starts to see your stride change, you raise your pad level, he is no longer thinking fade. He is thinking something underneath. And when he is thinking something underneath, He's going to be all over that route. So we have to be able to keep the exact same pad level, stride, everything all the way up into the break. That is number one. That is the most important focus. So now, after we snap down, you have to understand that that trigger step is what allows you to be able to do this. You have to be able to get to that low position. You have to let your hips drop. You have to try to bring your chin to your knee because this is the spot that allows me to be able to drive out with some kind of explosion. So now, to eliminate extra steps after you snap down, what a lot of wide receivers do is that this second step that he's about to take right here, they do not pivot their foot like Kyle Phillips does. What they'll do is they'll keep their, they'll keep their toe pointed forward. So they'll snap down. Then the second set, instead of turning that toe at like a 45, it will be pointed straight forward. And when your toe is pointed straight forward, your hips are pointed straight forward. And when your hips are pointed straight forward, you're going to have to take extra steps that we do not need to get out of the break. So we got to make sure that it is a snap and then a pivot. So we snap and then we pivot. Now, a lot of wide receivers, what they'll do is if this doesn't feel natural for you, chances are you were trying to pivot before you snap down. So you see how Kyle Phillips before the break He's committed shoulders, committed hips. Everything about this looks like a fade, right? Everything's committed straight forward. A lot of guys will start to turn their shoulder and turn their hips before they snap down because they're so concerned about that pivot leg. Now, the issue with that is that the second you start to turn your upper body, this DB who's sitting right here is breaking on the route because a DB is supposed to be watching your hips. So we have to make sure that I stay committed. That's why when I say the hips change direction for you. That's what I mean. So it's a snap and then a pivot. Now, that pivot step doesn't only serve to turn your hips. It allows your third step to drive. So I call it a snap, pivot, and then a hook. So now because you're pivoting off the second step, the third step will naturally hook around, get in the grass, and you can drive and push off of that third step to get you out. Now, again, you see how he takes a fourth step and you see how he takes a fifth step. That is fine. That's not the end of the world. I would rather have you take five steps than slow down and take three steps because simply you're eliminating wasted time like that. You're not slowing down, increasing the time it takes on the route. You are still getting out of the route fast you're dropping on a dime and you're getting separation. Those two, those five steps will still be faster than a DB who is trying to react off of your movement. We just have to make sure that the foot placement is correct and that those fourth and fifth steps I am taking, I'm taking those while my hips and my shoulders are already getting back on that 45 degree angle. Okay. So that's what we have to focus on doing. We got to focus on snapping, pivoting, and hooking to eliminate all wasted time and all steps that we do not need at the top of this break. Now, before I play this thing full speed, fellas, I want to talk to you guys about a great great opportunity. If you're a wide receiver and you need to improve your press releases as well as your moves at the top of the route, check out that very first link in the description below for our 20 press releases guide. So what you'll get access to is a 50 minute long video.
video where we break down 20 different releases, when to use each press release, and then drills to work on each one with sets and repetitions. So this all acts everything you need to know about press releases, the different situations, the different leverage you can use thing, things against, all mapped out for you. So if you guys need to improve your press release game and you guys want to improve those skills off the line, check out that very first link in the description, fellas, will really help you out. Let's watch this clip now full speed one more time, okay? So now, again, great job selling fade until the last possible second, not giving an indicator, snap, pivot, hook to get out of that break fast. All right, fellas, I really want to thank you for watching. Um, I really appreciate it. If you guys have any questions at all, don't hesitate to uh, leave those in the comment section below. We uh, really appreciate the feedback. Uh, you guys help keep the channel going. So again, we definitely, definitely appreciate it. I'll see you guys next time.